Here's a question that you've probably asked yourself before. What should be put in place to stop people from getting hurt at your work? Introducing the Hierarchy of Controls. It shows the best ways to control the danger posed by hazards. You will notice that the top category is largest, and as we go down, each category gets smaller. We made it this way to show that as we go down, the controls get less effective. The higher up a control is, the better job it generally does of keeping people safe. To explain this better, let's apply the hierarchy of controls to an actual hazard. Imagine there is a giant overhead lamp in the lobby, and the rope holding it up is starting to fray. This falling on somebody is obviously a hazard. The best thing that you can do to keep everyone as safe as possible is to remove it, right? That is always the safest option. Or replacing it with something safer, like a new light that won't fray. But removing and replacing is not always possible, not always necessary, and honestly, not always worth it. And if that's the case, then you want to move on to the three types of controls. The most effective form of control is the engineering control. That's why we gave it the letter A. This is a control that is physically attached to the hazard and will keep people safe no matter what they do. This would be like building a cage around the lamp that will catch it if it fell, or maybe attaching a chain to the lamp that will stop it from falling if the rope fails. A great solution to the problem, but oftentimes this is costly. The next control on the hierarchy is the administrative control. This is a control that is between you and the hazard. This includes training, communication of important information, wet floor signs, things like that. For our lamp, that would be like having pylons set up around the area that it would fall, and a message from management about what to look out for, as well as a regular schedule of preventative maintenance. Maybe it's checked out yearly. Not as good as a cage or a chain, but still something, and a lot cheaper too. The last control on the hierarchy is personal protective equipment. It's the least effective. This control is on the person reducing the chances of injury when they're exposed to the hazard. Things like gloves, close-toed shoes, and masks. For our lamp example, this would be like giving everybody in the lobby a helmet, so that when the lamp comes down, it might save them. Yeah, you can see why relying on PPE only is a very bad idea. So those are all the different styles of controls. But there is nothing that says that you can only use one of them per hazard. If you use an appropriate mix of engineering, administrative, and PPE, and get to a point where everyone is adequately safe, that's the goal. The key word is adequate. Do we need a chain, plus a cage to catch the lamp, plus a sign that cautions people, plus pylons, plus a message from management, plus helmets for everybody who walks by just for a light? Of course not. But you should make sure that you have enough to keep people safe enough. And the only way to do that is to make sure that the controls you use actually work. This video was a tiny look at episode 5 of our video series, OHS 101 for Leaders, where we explore all occupational health and safety laws and best practices. Click on the link below or go to our website to see every video in its entirety for free. Thank you so much and stay safe.